Hello, guys, and welcome to Odson Serie A Match Day 34. And we have an interesting match day, especially because the fight for the Champions League, Danny, is very tight. Uh, how are you, Danny? I'm okay, Edu. As we speak, Napoli are not yet champions of Italy. They play tonight, of course, against Udinese. But maybe by the time you watch this video, they have already won uh, the title. They just need a point in Udine. But as you mentioned, yes, this is a crucial match day for Champions League spot because again, there is the head-to-head Milano-Roma. This time it's Milan-Lazio-Roma-Inter. And of course, also Atalanta-Juventus in the match day that comes before the Champions League, the Milan Derby, the semi-finals of Europa League and Conference League with Italian teams involved. Let's analyze everything then, guys. Remember to leave your tips uh, and, of course, press the like and subscribe. And now let's go on with the show. And the best games are on Saturday, especially. We have uh, Milan-Lazio is the first game. Milan, they missed a huge chance against Cremonese. They couldn't beat them. Only a draw in the midweek games. Danny, a lot of draws for Milan yes. lately. And they could miss their chance to go to the next Champions League. Two points away now from Inter. Yes, and it will be totally the fault and the fault for not taking the chances at home. Same uh, script as against Salernitana, as against Empoli recently. Pioli made few changes, uh, kept on the bench Leao and Giroud to start with, kept Hernandez on the bench for the entire game. And Milan simply, they don't have very strong alternative to the first 11. I'm going to say, actually, between the top six in Serie A, probably, if you look at the alternatives coming from the bench, Milan are the weakest in terms of B teams. They really uh, cannot really draw from the resources on the bench. You know, the likes of Origi, the Cateler, uh, they give pretty much nothing to uh, the team. Six points in the last five for Milan. So they are suffering a slump, of course. There is the Champions League uh, game uh, next week and uh, you know Pioli needs to uh, manage his energies but it is a Milan that does struggle to score goals at home uh, they score five goals less compared to last season Milan but the problems doesn't only stop here they go 13 points less on the table so it's gonna be a happy struggle for them to finish in the top four especially taking into account the rotation and now Lazio bounce back as I predicted against Sassuolo I couldn't expect Lazio to lose three games on the road. They've been really, really uh, consistent. And, um, you know, they only lost one away game uh, this season in the last seven. I guess Asuolo is a very good display. They could score more. Now they return to San Siro after a week, after that defeat against Inter, when they looked a little bit tired in the second half. Let's see if Lazio can have a better game management this time. Uh, Lazio, extremely solid. Another clean sheet for Provedel number 19 of the season. Uh, they got the best defense alongside Napoli. And that's where the strength of Lazio is, is the organization, is the defense. Mm -hmm. Look at the number of goals conceded this season, 24. Last season, at this stage, they conceded double amount of goals, 48. So really great, great numbers. Never mind if they score a couple less. I don't think Lazio are going to drop more points here. I'm going to go for a double chance. Pays so well. X2, Milan-Lazio, 1.92. I'm so surprised to see Milan this favorite with odds around two, especially, of course, taking in consideration that they have to play the Champions League semi-final the following week. So I think this is a value bet uh, for sure. Going for Lazio and the other team involved in the Champions League semi-final, Inter are playing next and they are also favorite to beat Roma at the Olimpico. Roma right now out of Europe. They are seventh in the standings, only two points away from Inter because they failed to beat Monza and before Milan. Before that, they lost to Atalanta. So at one point, they have to wake up if they want to play European football or Champions League next season. And now they are playing... Danny, a good Inter, four consecutive victories since they got the ticket to that Champions League semi-final, including the victory in the Cup semi-finals against Juventus. And 
fully uh, free flow scoring against uh, Elas Verona, full of confidence this Inter now. Totally, because now they take the chances, you know, the difference between the games they're playing now and the one that they were playing a couple of months ago is basically that before they produced shots and chances, but they didn't take them. And now with a bit of luck as well, because, you know, the first goal from Verona is an own goal from Gaish in his own net. It's a very good diving header in the wrong in the wrong net. But then they were really clinical with Lautaro, another brace. Now he's closing in on Osimena as a top goal scorer, only two goals away. Even Jacob scored, who wasn't scoring since uh, 1953, almost, you know, I'm joking, <laughs> since, since the 4th of January, but it has been a long, long almost. time. And he, and he scored two. Um, so, I mean, it is, a, it, 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 is a, it is a side that looks a bit fresher, a bit more confident. I wonder whether they... It got like the physical condition back on. It almost repicked now towards the end of the season. And if that's the case, better things are to come for Inter. You know, if you look at the Inter squad and the depth in squad, probably only Juventus can uh, manage to have a squad so deep in talent. You know, very few managers in Italy can choose between Mkhitaryan Barella, Cialanoglu, uh, with obviously the help of Gagliardini there as well, Brozovic, and then up front, Lukaku, Dzeko, uh, Correa, is misfiring, uh, but obviously Lautaro. So there is plenty of uh, choice there uh, for Simone Inzaghi. Um, at this stage last season, Inter had scored nine goals more compared to this season in Serie A. So you wonder, the best is yet to come for them. And now they travel to Roma. Roma, you need to feel for them a little bit because against Monza, I don't think they could do more than what they actually did. It is a team that's caused too many injuries uh, mm -hmm. from Dybala to Wijnaldum to Kasdrop, uh, Belotti, Llorente. Now also El Sharawi, who scored a Monza, picked up an injury. Selic is going to be suspended for the red card. Mourinho, very polemic against the referee. He said he's the worst he's ever met. So there's a lot of nervousness, but also frustration there from Roma. I think Mourinho feels that with the team he's got at the moment, plus the injuries, really, he cannot do more than what he's actually doing. And probably he's right. The squad is short and Roma play Bayer Leverkusen midweek in Europa League. Uh, now, Roma, we know at home, they are very solid. They got the best home defense record. Only 10 goals conceded overall this season. Roma have become more solid, conceded six goals less compared to last year, but also scored nine goals less for a side that, you know, this season signed Dybala and Wijnaldum. They become more defensively minded. They can grind out result. If they do, it probably going to become another horrible game as the one against Milan. I don't think Inter are going to lose in Roma this time. It feels like now, after 11 defeats, every game is like a final for Inter. They are more switched on. I'm going to go for an Asian handicap zero here for Inter. 197. Should they draw? No problem. You get your money back. Mm -hmm. Probably, well, the draw could be a good option it could here. Be. Yeah, Roma has... Because some... Inter don't need to win. Now they got two more points compared to Atalanta and Roma and Milan, so they don't really need to win this one. If they win, they probably take Roma out of the equation for a Champions League spot, and they almost secure it. But a draw, as you mentioned, yeah, is probably a result that could, could work for them too. Let's see. They uh, Roma have uh, Bologna and Salernitana next, and also involved in this European semi-final. So the next yes. uh, weekend is going to be tricky for all the teams involved in European competitions. Uh, the draw is also my favorite outcome in the next one, Danny. <laughs> Cremonese, Spezia, because I wouldn't touch Cremonese to win. We only have to see the standings, three victories this season. But of course, Spezia, they are very poor. Same points as Verona losing to Atalanta and Monza. That's why when I cannot trust any team, the draw usually is a good option. Had Cremonese won in Milan, in Milano against uh, Milan, I would have backed them perhaps to win this one because they really could have been back into the into the fight for not getting relegated. It was only a draw, but despite Cremonese playing really well. So I think Cremonese are going to go down eventually, but they're going to go down with a lot of 
dignity, really. This is a side that this season has reached the Coppa Italia semifinal, has put out Roma, put out Napoli, beat Roma in the league, draw against Milan twice, a home and away. They're unbeaten in three of the last five home games. Cremonese drew against Verona, won against Empoli, scored in five of the last six games. So really, they are giving it a go, and they do have goal scorers, the likes of Okereke, of course, uh, Dessers. So I think uh, this is a side that you cannot underestimate between now and the end of the season. They know they're going to go down, but they're going to go down, you know, with their head up high. And Spezia, on the other hand, no wins in seven. They've been dragged into the relegation zone. So now they are level with Verona only because Verona lost against Inter. Otherwise, they would have been leapfrogged. But against Atalanta, a decent performance, 3 2, fought until the end, really. I wonder if they were with Zola on the pitch, would they actually drawn against Atalanta? Possibly, because they had a few chances. Now, check this. The, the lineups before putting a bet on here because if Spezia are without Zola, their chances of winning, I think they're reduced by 30% at least. No wins away for Spezia since the 15th of January, since they beat Torino. And since then, they always conceded. So I do fancy Cremonese to go on the score sheet. And I think it might not be a high scoring game. And I'm going to go double chance, one X for Cremonese, so not, not, not to lose the game. And under 3.5 goals, you can never expect high scoring games, especially in these uh, relegation fights. So one X and under 3.5 goals, total 188. All right. Uh, mini Aka in this Cremonese Spezia. Let's move on to the games we have on Sunday. Atalanta Juve. This is a great one. Atalanta back to the fight uh, about yes. the Champions League. Only two points away from those spots. Five points away from Juventus. Three consecutive victories for Atalanta. They have a good schedule. Salernitana and Verona are next. And Juventus, Dani. Also, remember that they have to play the Europa League semifinals against Sevilla. They don't look great lately. It's true that they beat uh, Lecce, but they were um, getting good results before, apart from the defeat in the Coppa Italia, of course. That was the first win against Lecce after three defeats and a draw. So, yes, they don't look uh, great. The problems are always the same. It is a team that struggles to impose the rhythm, the style of play if they do have a style of play. Because, you know, sometimes you don't even know how Juventus are playing. They really tend to uh, leave the initiative to the opposition and then exploit their uh, deficiencies. Against Lecce, they deserve to win. But, you know, credit to Lecce, who came close to make it 2-2. Two -two. Uh, reasons to be cheerful for uh, Allegri. Uh, Vlaovic scored the first goal since the 7th of February. Paredes scores his first goal with a Juventus shirt. Even Pogba had a good cameo and a good performance uh, against Lecce, but that's it. So, um, the numbers of Juventus are not great. The last away game against Verona, they were very quick, slow off the block, they missed the penalty, scored, could have won in the end. You know, they're always going to create chances to win games, Juventus, with the talent they have. is about really uh, trying to impose uh, themselves against opposition like Atalanta. They're going to go for it. Um, they... Don't score many goals, Juve. That's, that's the problem. Away from home, they only scored 14 goals. Salernitana, Monza, Sassuolo and Cremonese have done better than them. If you look at the numbers overall, compared to last season, same number of goals scored. So the team hasn't really improved. Atalanta, surprisingly, three wins in a row because normally they are a team that when they got a match ball, they often miss it, but this time against Spezia, they managed to keep the cool. They played really well in the second half. In 15 minutes, Muriel and Zapata scored. Uh, as Muriel scored. Uh, their own score a couple in the first half, but you know, they were looking like they were scoring three or four in a row against Spezia. Then they kind of reined it in, considered the goal, a little bit of nerves in the end, uh, three points that are really important uh, for them. Um, they don't play in Europe, and that's a big advantage for them. And in fact, if you look at the classification in the last six games, why the last six games? The one after the international break, so when the cup restarted, who are, who's top of the league? Atalanta in the last six mm -hmm. games. And Lazio and Monza, who don't play in Europe, are also in the top four. So if this trend continues, you could see Atalanta and Lazio finishing in the top four and all those teams not in Europe finishing very strongly. You know, it's a double-edged sword. A lot of Italian teams in the European competition means the Italian teams who play in Europe probably are more tired when they go into, um, into, into the league games. But the Atalanta numbers at home are 
a question of concern. Only one clean sheet in the last six home games. They do tend to concede. So I think even Juventus, who's been a bit poor in front of goals, can score against them. 58% of Atalanta games so far this season have been both to score. 48% of the Atalanta games have been both to score and over 2.5 goals. So you might want to go maybe for one of them. I'm going to go for both to score here. 191. I don't fully trust Juventus' defense to keep a clean sheet. I think Atalanta always going to concede chances and Juventus at least can take one. Both to score, 191. Okay, great game this one. Atalanta-Juve for the Champions League spots. The next one, nothing to play for. Torino-Monza, but one of the best teams in the last weeks. As you mentioned, Monza, 10 out of the last 12 points because they drew against Roma in the last one. Torino dropping points at home, only one point in the last four games. That's why, Danny, I see a value bet going for Monza. Torino is so favorite for this game. It could be. These are teams that if you look at the numbers, they are very similar. They are a level on points, the same number of wins, same number of draws, same number of defeats, but two completely different style of play. In fact, Monza has scored six goals more than Torino, but also conceded six goals more than Torino. So Monza is a side that plays very expansive football. They do uh, lack sometimes a bit of focus at the back. It's more entertaining to watch. Only one defeat in the last nine for Monza. That was against Lazio. But only two clean sheets uh, kept uh, so far. 1-1 one, one against uh, Roma. Maybe they could have won it considering uh, Roma were a little bit depleted. Torino... They won after a defeat. And now this has been like the story of the season. They've been so inconsistent this season. They only won back-to-back games twice, lost three out of the last seven, but then won in Rome against Lazio and in Genova against Sampdoria without conceding. So it's very difficult to read this uh, Torino side, who, by the way, never scored more than two goals this season in Serie A. They got the third worst home attack with only 13 goals scored and only one win in the last six at home. So yeah, Going with Monza with a double chance for Monza, I think is a good idea. But I'm going to go for an over 2.25 goals here, 217. I think this is a game with nothing at stake where they're going to be goals. And we're going to see, say maybe like Salernitana, Fiorentina midweek, 3-3. They're going to be a lot of goals here. I think even Torino could manage to score more than two now at the end of the season. Over 2.25 goals, 217. If there are only two goals in the game, you lose only at a stake. Next game, Napoli Fiorentina or <laughs> Scudetto Party number yes. two. <laughs> because, yeah, well, I mean, or three, because uh, that is Thursday night. Or well. three, let's, yeah. We are recording see, this let's... video ahead yeah. of the game uh, Napoli have on uh, Thursday. So we are not sure if they have won the Scudetto in Udine. Or not, but we saw the party interruptus against Salernitana yes. the previous weekend. They couldn't beat uh, Salernitana at home. So no matter if they are already champions or they were crowned champions on Thursday, this is going to be a party, I'm completely sure, with the stadium packed, uh, probably. Uh, a lot of things going out uh, around the stadium. And in the meantime, Fiorentina goes to Napoli, of course, with the focus in the conference semifinals. They are playing against Basel, but in a good moment uh, in the season, especially in the knockout tournaments. Uh, it's difficult to analyze this game because it's going to be very sentimental, Danny, if you want to bet on that. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. I expect Napoli to win the Scudetto tonight with a point at least in Odin and then to be a massive party. It could be a very strange game, a very strange atmosphere with all the joy and all the demonstration of love. But if you look at Fiorentina, they are in good form. 13 goals scored in the last six. Uh, so they become, um, you know, they're taking the chances a little bit better. Four of the last five games have been uh, both to score. They can go to the Maradona. I don't want to say to spoil the party, but not to get beaten heavily. Mm. Very difficult, really, to put a bet on Napoli. Uh, from now on, uh, the games, uh, yes, I mean, they, they, they're going to become unpredictable. And, you know, Napoli plays some games against teams that got a lot to play for so those are going to become interesting but this one really nothing at stake I'm going to go for a Fiorentina Gen Handicap plus 0.75 because I like it I mean it's, it's more than a double chance for Fiorentina plays 195 if they're going to be defeated they might going to be defeated by one goal so a low margin I think they're going to score you might even going to go for a boat to score here plus 0.75 195 if, you, if they draw you win if you win they win if they lose by one goal you only lose half a stake 
much more things on stake yes. in the next one. Also in the south of Italy, in Puglia, we have Lecce. Verona, four points away. Verona from Lecce. But remember, this team is so bad when they are traveling. They couldn't even beat Cremones in Cremona. Uh, they are coming from a 6-0 defeat in the Bentegodi. And Lecce, Dani, at least they were able to grab the victory in the last home game against Udinese. This one is key. If Lecce wins, they will be safe. Almost. Yes. Almost. Three points and they will be. They, they will stay in Serie A next season because I don't expect uh, Spezia to win in Cremona. Yes, if they, be, if they beat Verona, that's it. But seven he's points. not going to... Seven points, you know, with four games to go. Yeah, Verona will need a miracle really to, to stay up. But let's say I've only won one game since the end of February, and that was last week against against Udinese in Turin. A positive game, they could have drawn it. The only concern I go with Lecce, which is not a small concern, is that they don't have goal scorers. The goals, the top goal scorer is Trefezza, eight goals scored, who, by the way, is back from suspension. The last two goals for Lecce have been uh, penalties and only scored five goals in the last seven home games. Five of these seven home games have been under 2.5 goals. So, really, Lecce... If they win it, it's going to be a 1-0, a very scrappy win, I think. And it's going to be like this until the end of the season. They do not have the goal scorers. On the other hand, Verona might have goal scorers in uh, Simone Verdi, for example, against Inter. I mean, it was a series of calamities. First the on goal, then uh, Inter took the chances very well. At the end of the first half, they were 3-0 down. They were never in the contest. Uh, Andanovic only had to make one save. Verona away from home have been shocking. All, no, no away wins. Only team in Serie A with no away wins. Worse away attack, eight goals scored. And nine of the, out of the last 10 away games have been under 2.5 goals. So, you know, if they concede, often they lose 1 nil, 2 nil. So it's very difficult to see uh, here a very high scoring game, really. It could be a boring draw. It could be a 1 1 draw. It really doesn't help anybody. I'm going to go for a ball to score, no, 183. Well, and we have uh, three more games on Monday, starting with Empoli Salernitana. Salernitana, I think, with 35, they are completely safe. Empoli with 32, no, not yet. Uh, they still need to grab a victory. They lost to Sassuolo and they lost the last three games. So they are in a bad moment, especially because they don't score enough. And for Salernitana, Dani. Credit uh, to them, we always say it in the last weeks, but it's great what they are doing, to be honest. They drew with Fiorentina, with Napoli, unbeaten in the last 10 with eight draws, uh, and the drop pays 3.5. I'm not saying anything, Danny. It could be a good, a good, <laughs> a good, a good bet here. Yeah, considering the number of draws Salernitana had. Look, I think Salernitana have been really smart with the signings and also the way they strengthened the team in uh, in January. They understood that uh, their strength was up front, and in fact, they scored 13 goals more compared to last season. Abu Ladia, 15 goals in Serie A. Three goals against Fiorentina is the uh, top scorer of all time, leading goal scorer of Salernitana in Serie A, overcoming Marco Di Vaio. But they also understood that with that kind of formation, those kind of players, they were always going to concede chances. So what they did, they bought a top-class goalkeeper, Ochoa. And Ochoa, every other game, is the man of the match mm -hmm. for Salernitana, even against Fiorentina, also against Napoli. I think at least Ochoa gave them so far, since January, since he joined the team, uh, five or six points, which are crucial in the, in the salvation. Uh, and, you know, uh, Salernitana goalkeepers are the seconds for saves made after, of course, uh, Cremonese goalkeepers. This season in Serie A, uh, we don't know, Empoli, what the situation is going to be. If they beat Bologna tonight, the day we are recording the, the game, this basically is a almost a non-match, there's nothing to play for, they will be absolutely safe. But if they don't, it becomes uh, much more important, of course. Only two wins since January for uh, Empoli, 1-0 at Milan against Inter, 1-0 against Lecce. Yes, they don't score nowhere near enough, although they concede many le much less goals compared to last season. Uh, I'm going to go for Arejan Andica, plus 0 0.25 for Salernitana here, 2-11. So it pays really, really well. Uh, so it's a side that has drawn a lot of games. If they draw, mm. you win half your 
mistake. I like this one. I like this one. Uh, next one is Udinese, Sampdoria. Oh. And this is a funny world uh, because uh, Sampdoria, they are the worst team in Serie A. They are going to Serie B. That's for sure. I think they already gave up. And on the other side, we have Genoa. They can go to Serie A yes. this weekend. Actually, they have a six-point difference with the third in the standings with Barry. So in the same weekend, uh, Sampdoria can go down. Genoa will go up, crossing paths. Danny. For this game, we have uh, Udinese 1.58 to win. Uh, Sampdoria, they are awful, no? So I guess we should expect uh, Udinese to win here. Yeah, I think they should. And the, uh, Sampdoria could be relegated this weekend, by the way. If Spezia and Verona win and they lose, they are mathematically down. I think it's unlikely. I think it will happen probably next week. But yeah, it's a side that uh, hasn't really had that reaction uh, to, to the crisis you know, they brought in Stankovic in uh, mid-season. He kind of gave them a little bit of a boost initially, but not enough. I think the problem is Sampdoria has got like, too many players that got experience and good, decent international pedigree. They didn't expect to be in a relegation fight and now they can react. Also, there are issues outside of the pitch with the club being up for sale. There are debts, unpaid wages. It is difficult really to manage the situation. I'm sure they will be back soon in Serie A. No wins in six. Worse attack and joint worse defense. 59 goals conceded with Cremonese. But if you look at the defense of Sampdoria, the names, at least on paper, they are not by any stretch of imagination, the worst defense in Serie A. They're just badly put together and with no confidence. Udinese, 27 goals scored at home. Let's see if they score against Napoli uh, tonight and they spoil the party. But 27 goals is a very good tally. Same as Lazio, more than Roma and Fiorentina. I think Udinese are going to stick at least a couple against uh, Sampdoria. They're going to finish the season on a high. I'm going to go for a legend handicap minus one for Udinese, 193. If they draw, uh, so if they draw, if you lose, if they win by one, you only get your money back. Well, and the last game is Sassuolo Bologna. Absolutely nothing to play no. for. Two teams that are doing a good second part of the season, to be honest. Sassuolo, four victories and one draw in the last five home games. 2.4 for Sassuolo to win. Sassuolo, the master of inconsistencies. I mean, bad, not a bad performance against Lazio. They kept the ball well, even have chances in the second half. But, you know, in the last five, defeat, win, defeat, yeah. win, defeat. So maybe now is a win, but they play for nothing. Uh, they, they don't play badly. I mean, I think the win against uh, Juventus at home, they had a very, very good display. They got sc goal scorers, the likes of, of course, uh, the Frel, Oriente, Berardi, even Pinamonti might be back from the suspension and start this one. Bologna, let's see what happens against Empoli. If they take the lead early in games, they tend to then become very reactive and very defensive. It happened against Milan, against Juventus. But, you know, they do score goals even against top sides. They got Orsolini already 10 goals in Serie A. 59% of games of Bologna have been both to score. Away from home, they've not been great. I think they're going to score here. Sassuolo probably going to score another goal. Both to score. Doesn't pay amazingly well. 182. But, you know, this is a game really with nothing at stake. Exactly. Exactly. Danny, well, uh, this is it. Uh, very interesting weekend uh, with uh, so many teams involved in European football. In Italy, Danny, tell me your safe bet. Okay. Cremonese Spezia double chance. 1x, 141. Well, who would have said that the uh, best bet is going for Cremonese <laughs> in yes. this stage of the season? And Yoraka? Milan Lazio over 1.5 goals. Atalanta Juventus over 0 0.5 goals in the first half. Napoli Fiorentina both to score. Empoli Salernitana double chance. X2. The total odds, 7. Next season, we are going to have Frosinone, probably Genoa, yes, and let's see who is there. Let's the... see, uh, Bari, Palermo, Sutirol. Uh, Sutirol. Uh, we'll see, because I mean, uh, it's always interesting, really. Frosinone, yes, got promoted, managed by Fabio Grosso, uh, oh, world champions so with, uh, with, yes, with, uh, with Italy. So, yeah, against Genoa. Yes. Yes, yes, and he's been second season there. Last season finished 11 in Serie B. He, they kept him, changed half of the squad, and now they are promoted, play really well, but 
I think they change again the squad because they go all the players alone. I think it's a big question mark. Really curious to see who who wins the playoff. It's, it's very interesting. Serie B is very interesting. Another team from Lazio, Frosinone, yes. joining Three. Lazio and Roma. Well, Danny, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Remember, follow us, press the like, subscribe, and see you next week. Bye-bye. Ciao.